Hi, this is an electronic game my friend sent me a while ago. It's called the VTEC Talking Mini Wizard. Listen to its speech closely. Ready, press a button. Go! You might hear a robotic, annoying sometimes, or slightly artificial voice coming out of it. But here's the thing. This voice was used in a lot of different devices, including toys, games, and others. And the technology behind it is quite outstanding. It is based on a principle called Linear Predictive Coding, or LPC for short. And today I want to show you how it works and some examples of it being used in different devices. This is LPC the voice behind the toy. I won't go too in-depth in the history of this technology because it was worked on for decades and decades on end. It actually started way back in the 1940s. But for this video, I'll focus on consumer-grade products from the 1970s, 80s, and 90s that use this technology. So, what is LPC and how does it work? Well, first of all, LPC is not text-to-speech. Hello, my name is Sam. That is, it doesn't take text input and translate it into speech. At least, not in this form. It is based out of recordings. Think of it as a method of encoding audio, a bit like MP3 nowadays. These days, memory is really cheap, but it wasn't always that way. Back in the 1970s, memory was quite expensive. So consequently, they needed a way to store speech and digitally without taking too much space. That's where LPC comes in. Simply put, LPC analyzes a voice using different properties. These properties include frequency, how high or low the voice is in pitch, volume, how loud or soft the voice is, plosives, which are basically noise sounds, and formats, which are basically different vowels created by the voice. The vocal cords forms the pitch, which is replicated by an oscillator or a tone generator. Sibilance, or plosives, are created by a noise oscillator. And different vowels, such as as well as noise like are then analyzed and then put through a formant filter, which is basically cutting different frequencies out. Or simply put, a tonal oscillator, which is creating the pitch, is mixed with a noise oscillator, responsible for sibilance and plosives, and everything is ran through a formant filter, which is cutting frequencies out. But how are these formants analyzed? Well, it's a bit complicated, but basically, the LPC, or Linear Predictive Codec, is taking in consideration that a voice is based out of a buzzer at the end of a tube. That tube is creating all the vowel sounds and all the timbre of noise. That tube is basically part of the mouth and other parts of the vocal cords. And when you move your mouth, open it or close it or move it in a certain way, it creates vowel sounds and noise types, like pink noise, white noise, filtered noise, etc. Then, the LPC algorithm basically analyzes these different vowels and noise types, we will call them formants here, and what remains is the residue, which is just the frequency or pitch of the voice. When the signal is then decoded, the frequency of the voice, which is the pitch, as well as the analyzed formants, are then combined together to create an artificially generated voice. Think of it as a talk box. You use a rich waveform in harmonics, a bit like a sawtooth, and the shape of your mouth basically shapes the timbre of the sound. But, as you might know, speech is not just one single tone. It evolves over time. Because of this, the linear predictive coding algorithm analyzes a voice at least 40 times per second. That gives intelligible speech. In case of power fluctuations, for example, the LPC algorithm has a tendency to glitch out, such as in this example. Next spell. <laughs> so, what are the pros and cons of using LPC? Let's start with the cons first. The major con is that you can't use chords or polyphonic materials in LPC. After all, you can't sing more than one note at once. The second flaw is that it works best with human voice. It was designed to digitally emulate how a human voice sounds, so while you can put other stuff through it, the results might not be as successful as you might think. But with disadvantages come advantages. If you use monophonic voices, you can tweak the voice however you want, change the format, the speed, and even the pitch without degrading the sound too much. These techniques were used in a couple of toys. Speaking of which, let's look at some examples of LPC being used in novel way. 
The first way that LPC was used in a consumer product was with the Speak and Spell from Texas Instruments. The first model came out in 1978 and only had 32 kilobytes of memory. Despite this small memory, it still contains 4 minutes of speech. Said 4 minutes of speech include over 150 spellable words. Ancient business circuit. Other than that, there are a few announcements such as You are correct and Wrong. Try again. During gameplay, the player needs to spell out a word called out by the machine. If he gets it right, he gets a point. If he doesn't, he loses a point. While really basic, it was one of the first, if not the first, child's toy to support digital speech. While other toys did talk, they used a mechanism similar to a record player that was all analog. The sheep goes. <laughs> After the success of the Speak and Spell, Texas Instruments brought out other products, such as the Speak and Read, Speak and Math, and Speak and Music. They also used the same technology for an add-on for the TI-994 and 4A computers. Other products from other manufacturers soon followed, such as Milton Bradley's self-titled Milton Game. Milton I'm Milton. Who's out there? <laughs> that was supposed to be a follow-up to Simon. In this game, a player was supposed to match a red phrase that was on the top with a yellow phrase that was on the bottom, creating a full sentence. If he gets it right, he gets a point. If not, then... <laughs> Ridiculous. Now let's move along to 1992. Milton Bradley was at it again, releasing three talking board games, including Mall Madness, Dream Phone, and the last one I really want to talk about, Omega Virus. This one is quite interesting, since it uses a technique that was discussed earlier in this video. Time stretching. During the 1990s, LPC chips have become cheaper and cheaper to produce and sounded better and better. Notable examples include Merlin the Tenth Quest, which was a follow-up to 1978's Parker Brother game, Merlin. Brave night, the challenge awaits. The last example I want to show you is a toy from Tiger Electronics that came out in 1998, the Furby. This was quite special, as it could play one LPC file at four different pitches to simulate different genders. But starting from 2001, these chips ceased to exist. <laughs> they replaced LPC chips with poor quality samples. I'm speaking 4 kilohertz and even less than 10 seconds sometimes. Whether this was better, LPC was dead. Several plugin emulation of LPC behavior came out over the years, and LPC made a comeback in 2018 with the PO35 Speak from Teenage Engineer. This is a pocket-sized sampler that you can still buy today and it allows you to sample your own voice or external sounds, tweak the pitch, speed, and format of the sounds. What started as a necessity became a cool gimmick. So what should I say about LPC now? I guess, like other technologies, it just moved on. It started, it had its heyday, and it ended. But I think it still has its place for those of you who are nostalgic about these sounds. So thank you so much, have a wonderful day. Perfect store.